That's you right up there. You're on the top of the building. Suppose I should have put windows in it. You're on the top of a building and you are about to drop a ball. Just drop it, you're not throwing it. You're dropping a ball and it's gonna go straight down and hit the pavement. Oh, it says an object. Okay, I get to make the object anything I want. I'm gonna let it be an egg. Why are you doing it? Because you're mean. And you were just a little kid at the time. Of course, you shouldn't be on the top of tall buildings. This building is 1,013 feet high, which means you got your little self in the elevator. You went all the way up to the top floor and then the door must have been left open and you went out onto the roof. Boy, are you gonna get a spanking when you get home. That's if your mom finds out. Like for instance, if there's a person down here who's about to get clobbered by the egg, you better not do that. All right, so this building is 1,013 feet high. All right, and you're dropping this from rest. In other words, no energy goes into throwing it. You just poof, let it go. This formula will tell you, well, it gives you the distance and lets you find the time. However, well, yeah. I mean, okay, usually you've got the time because you're a science student and you're up there with a stopwatch and you also have another student down here with the stopwatch. But, you know, it's backwards. What they're saying is, all right, this is the distance, 1,013 feet. We want to know how many seconds it takes to drop. Well, all right. So for S equals 16 T squared, we're going to have 1,013 equals 16 times T squared. Let's divide by 16 and divide by 16. And I do not know if 16 goes evenly into 10, 13 or not. I mean, I doubt it, but you never know. 10, 13 divided by 16. Oh, that's not bad. That is a terminating decimal. It just stops after the five. If I don't round it, I'll have the exact answer. Excellent. 63.3125 equals T squared. Well, let's write this in a way that's more familiar. T squared equals 63.3125. And take the square root of both sides. In this case, I'm not going to put plus or minus in front. The reason is I'm looking for time. And I'm not really sure what negative time is. If you take a physics class, negative time means the time before you started. But we don't deal with that kind of stuff. So we're just going to go for the positive one, the positive answer. So that will be T equals whatever the square root of this is. So second X squared. 63.3125. I could have said answer for those of you who already know how to work this. And I, I neglected to write down how many um, uh, decimal places 
they said to round to. So let's just round to the nearest whole second because that sure is close to eight seconds. So let's say about. That's the symbol for about eight seconds. You'll read the instructions when you are working on your homework and you will give them however many decimal places they want, but I'm willing to bet they said round to the nearest second. So that's how long it's going to take this guy to fall. Eight seconds. That's a long time. It actually is if you're just standing there. But you prove that gravity exists. Good for you. Stop me if you have questions. Now we've got a television set. There are a lot of these kind of problems that you're going to be doing. Diagonal of a TV set is 39 inches. You're about to buy maybe a 39 inch television set. When you see the number of inches, when it says 39 inch, 36 inch, um, eight feet, <laughs> whatever, they're talking about the length of the diagonal. Okay, the diagonal of a TV set is 39 inches long. Its length is 21 inches more than the height. Excuse me. So the length is going to be the height plus 21 or 21 plus the height. Now, what are we being asked? We're asked to find the dimensions of the TV set. That just means the length and the height. So, the vertical side is usually A, the horizontal side is usually B, the diagonal is always C, and we're going to be working with A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is the formula whenever you're asked to solve a problem um, dealing with the length of the sides of a right triangle. Not the area, but the length of the sides. So we are going to have H squared. Uh -uh. Well, I could say that, yeah. H squared plus L squared, but L is given in terms of H. So H plus 21 squared equals 39 squared. So this will be H squared plus parentheses, H plus 21 times H plus 21 equals, I don't know, 39 squared. 1521. And while I'm at it, I know I'm going to have to say 21 times 21. Let's find out what that is. That'll be 441, okay. So, H squared plus, and I'm gonna do my daily here, H times H, H times 21, 21 times H, 21 times 21. So I really didn't wanna do this in blue, so I'm going to change, change to gray. This will be H squared plus H squared plus 21 H plus 21 H plus 4, 
41 equals 15, 21. So h squared plus h squared is 2h squared. 21 plus 21 is 42. That's 21h plus 21h is 42h. Plus 441. And I'm going to subtract, but this is a quadratic equation. Uh, to solve it, I have to use the zero principle, put a zero over here. So I am going to subtract 1521 from both sides of the equation. And what that will give me is 2h squared plus 42h plus 441 minus 1521. 441 minus 1521. Uh, 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 uh. 441 minus 1521. Enter. That will be negative or minus 1080 equals zero. Now, I'm not ready to solve it yet. I have to pull out a GCF if there is one. And there is. These are all even numbers. Two will go evenly into them. So I'll have 2h squared plus uh, 2 times 21 times h minus um, 540 times 2 equals zero. Let's make sure. Two times five is 10, two times 40 is 80. Yes. Okay. I now have a GCF of two in each term, and I pull it out to the front, and I mark out the two, and, <clears throat> Excuse me, h squared plus 21h minus 540 equals zero. And then because I can, because it's an equation, I divide both sides by two so that I get rid of a little more stuff like cleaning house or cleaning out the house. So we'll have H squared plus 21 H minus 540 equals zero. Now, if you don't wanna to bother to factor that negative 540 and get two numbers that add up to 21, you can always use the quadratic formula where a is 1, b is 21, and c is negative 540. You could do that. We could do that. But it is faster when you've got a calculator, oops, and you don't hit a negative sign twice, to take negative 540 zero, oh, not there. You've got to go to the right place. Negative five, four, zero, and divide by X and hit second graph. And now I go down, 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 down and look for two numbers that look like they would add up to 21. Fifteen and thirty-six. 
Okay, now this is positive 15 and negative 36. Let me just write it down here. But it's also true the other way around. Negative 540 equals positive 15 times negative 36. And if I add those together, I would get negative 21, but it also is going to equal negative 15 times positive 36 and negative 15 plus 36. Six minus five is one and three minus one is two. So we would get positive 21 from there. So I therefore know, or at least hope strongly, that if I go up here, I will have boom, 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 equals zero, h, h, uh, minus 15, plus 36. And then I'll have H minus 15 equals zero. H plus 36 equals zero. I always stop a little short. Um, add 15 to both sides. So I'll have H equals 15. Over here, I subtract 36 from both sides. So I'll have H equals negative 36, which given that I'm looking for the height of the television set, makes no sense. So for that reason, we will have H equals 15, and L, have more room up here, is going to be 15 plus 21 equals 36. So those are the dimensions. Let me write it in blue up here. Length equals 36 inches. Height equals 15 inches. Just blurt out any questions. I hated these problems when I was a math student more than any other kind of math problem because I thought they were the very scariest. So um, when I finally learned how to work it, I did a whole bunch of them so that I would permanently have the idea. These, these problems are in every college algebra box, box book, in the universe just even on a distant star you've got you've got people in classrooms going oh no the box problem yes they are they might have three heads but they're doing it all right we have an open box and it's made from a 40 centimeter by 60 centimeter piece of tin right here it's 40 inches by six inches, 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Now, they're going to make it into a box, an open top box, by cutting a square out of each corner and folding up the edges so that you get this where this is the bottom of the box, and you get that by folding up the sides.
my boxes are always very rickety. Yes. OK, so here's the bottom. The base. Here's the bottom. Um, if I want to call this side one, that would be here, side one, and so forth. Okay? Um, side two, I'll call it S2, S3, S3, and S4. That's what you get when you fold it up. Now, what we're asking is, okay, these are little squares. They are X centimeters long. All of them. What is X? How big is the square that I have to cut out? I don't know. We're going to find out. The trick to doing this, and that's always true, if you can remember this, this, the side here, the base, it used to be 60 centimeters when it was just a piece of tin, but then it got shortened by X centimeters on this side and X centimeters on this side. So now this side used to be 60, but now it is shorter. And the same for this side right here. It used to be 40, the, the piece of 10, but then we cut out X of its length right here and X of its length right here. So now it's shorter. It used to be 40, but now it's shorter by an X and an X. So when it comes to finding the base of the box, we're gonna multiply the length times the width. Now we are told that the area of the resulting base which is what I should have called this, is 1,196 <clears throat> 1, square centimeters. Square centimeters, I hope I said square centimeters. All right, now, they gave us the area of the base and we now know what the length and the width are in terms of algebra statements. All we have to do is say length times width equals area. Because that's always true for rectangles. All right, so the length is 60 minus 2x and the width is 40 minus 2x, and the area is 1196. It's the centimeters that are squared, not the 1196. It's like square feet, square inches, square yards, same idea. So now I could actually make life easier for myself by taking out a common factor here and a common factor here. Let's do it because I hate big numbers. I'm going to continue with this problem and with the next problem and that's all there is. So you can go ahead and leave if you want to and then watch on the video later or you can stay with me and watch. Either way, whatever makes you happy. 
and have a good safe weekend. All right, now I'm going to pull a GCF out of here. Two will go into two and two will go into 60. So this is two times 30 minus two times X. So I'm going to pull a two out. Mark through the two. And I'll have 30 minus X. And over here, I have, what do I have? I have two times 20 minus two times X. So I have a two in each of these terms that I can pull out to the front and mark through the two and write the leftovers. Now I don't want to forget my 1196. All right, now look at this, I have two times 30 minus X times two times 20 minus X. I can multiply the two and the two together and get a four. So I will have four times 30 minus X times 20 minus X equals 11 96. And then because it's an equation, I can divide out the four. So this is getting rid of my GCF a little bit early, but that's okay, I hope. Let's make sure, see this was such a good idea, I thought, on, on, there. 11, 96 divided by four. Thank you, okay. That equals 299. So we're going to have over here, um, 30, well, let's write it again. Let's clean it up. Thirty minus X times twenty minus X equals two ninety nine, and then thirty times twenty. 30 times negative X, negative X times 20, negative X times negative X. So 30 times 20 is 600, minus 30 X, minus 20 X, Negative X times negative X is positive X squared equals 299. All right, so I'm going to get my like terms together over here and put this in descending order. X squared minus 50X plus 600 equals 299. And then I have to use the zero principle. So minus 299 and minus 2 
99. This will be a zero. X squared minus 50 X 600 minus 299 is 301. Now, let's go back up, make sure I did everything right. Okay, so now we're going to check out 301 and see if we can find two factors that add up to negative 50. I don't feel real hopeful. Hope reigns eternal. Okay. Oh, okay. Next time I say it's hopeless, remind me of this. It just so happens that seven times 43 Okay, 301, let's even write it kind of in order down here. 301 equals positive seven times positive 43, which means it also equals negative seven times negative 43. I thought we were gonna have to end up using the quadratic formula. George, is that you out there? Kitty, 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 kitty. Why would he want to stay out in the snow? I don't know. I wouldn't. Negative seven plus negative 43 equals negative 50. So we're going to have boom, 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 boom. I can do my boom, boom thing because there's an invisible one in front of the X squared. I'll have X and I'll have X and I'll have minus seven and I'll have minus 43 and that equals zero. So boom, X minus seven equals zero and X minus 43 equals zero, add seven to both sides of the equation. That gives me X equals seven, and then add 43, and add 43. I'll have X equals 43. So the length of the sides of the square might be seven centimeters or might be 43 centimeters, which means even one of these X's would be bigger than 40. Excuse me? No, that doesn't make sense. So we're gonna kind of leave these guys be and we are going to say, okay, the length of the side of the squares is going to be seven centimeters. So seven will be what I put in the answer box. Ta-da! All that just to find the length of the side. But if you're making the box, you want to know how much you have to cut. I make cards. That's what I do. I, that's my hobby. I make cards like for people in hospitals and whatever, people in nursing homes. 
And so I also make my own envelopes. So I have to know how big to make my squares. I relate to this. One more thing. Find the dimensions of a rectangular, so it's a rectangle, a rectangular Persian rug whose perimeter, that's the length around the outside like a fence, whose perimeter is 22 feet and whose area is 28 feet. So, first, Let's draw the dimensions. We're going to have a length and a width and a length and a width. And the length times the width is the area. And adding L plus W plus L plus W gives me the perimeter equals 2L plus 2W. So I'm going to be working a problem that has two formulas, the area formula and the perimeter formula. All right, whatever. Here's the information we're given that the perimeter is 22 feet, and the area is 28 squared feet. Well, I have to use one of these equations for substitution. All right, now if I use the second one for substitution, I'm going to end up with L equals 28 over W, or W equals 28 over L. I don't really want to use fractions, do you? Not many people really want to use fractions. So we're going to use the other formula. 22 equals 2L plus 2W. And the neat thing is you've got a GCF right off the bat. Look at this. A 2 and a 2 and two goes into 22 evenly. So we're gonna have 22 equals two times L plus W. There's my GCF. I'm going to divide, because this is an equation, I'm going to divide my pure number GCF out. There aren't any letters there. There aren't any variables. Otherwise, I couldn't do this. All right, and 2 goes into 22 11 times. So that will give me 11 equals L plus W. And since I need to find both, it doesn't matter whether I solve for L or whether I solve for W. Just doesn't matter. So why don't I solve for W? I'll subtract L from both sides of this equation. And that will give me 11 minus L equals W. So I have this binomial and I'm going to use that to substitute for W in the other equation, which is 28 equals 
L times W. So 28 equals um, L, <laughs> all right, never mind, equals L times W, but W equals 11 minus L. That's cool. So 28 equals L times 11, that's 11 L, minus L times L, or positive L times negative L is negative L squared. So I'm gonna write this in descending order first before I do anything else. Negative L squared plus 11 L. Now I'm going to use the zero principle and subtract 28 from both sides of the equation. So I'll have zero equals negative L squared plus 11 L minus 20 Eight. Now don't go off trying to solve it now. Because look at this. Our leading coefficient is negative one. So we need to pull out a, a negative one GCF. So here I go. There's a negative one there. And I can write 11 as negative 1 times negative 11 L plus negative 1 times positive 28. See, remember that when your leading, leading coefficient is negative, you need to pull out a negative GCF. So I needed to make sure I had, I mean, I had to make, remake these numbers so that I would have a negative one in each term that I could pull out. Okay, there's a negative 11 L left. That's where that comes from. And this is a positive 28, which is where that comes from. Now I'm going to divide out that negative one. So it does not trouble me anymore. Zero divided by negative one is zero. So I'll have zero equals L squared minus 11 L plus 28. Now 28 equals 7 times 4. And if you add those together, you get positive 11. But positive 28 also equals negative 7 times negative 4. And negative 7 plus negative 4 equals negative 11. So, yay, zero equals L, L minus seven minus four.
and so uh, uh, no. L minus seven equals zero, L minus four equals zero. Add seven, add seven, L equals seven, and add four, add four, L equals four. I have two possible answers here. Let's see what this does for us. Um, okay, okay. W equals 11 minus L. So if L is seven, then W is going to equal 11 minus seven, which is four. And if L is four, then W is going to equal 11 minus four, which is seven. Okay, well, this is great. The long side has to be the bigger number. That's why it's the long side. That is length, long, same thing. So our length, length of what? Let's look back at the problem. The rug, the length is going to be seven feet. And the width is going to be four feet. And now we know the dimensions of our carpet. 